Hey guys, welcome back to the Samsung stage. We're back again, and this time with a brand new game just announced at E3. I've got John with me. Hi, John. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. How nice are you? Nice to meet you, too. I'm, I'm doing really well. Thanks for asking. You know that you're the first person today to ask me how I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> you're my favorite already. But enough about that. Defenders of Time. This is your game. You've just announced it at E3. What is Defenders of Time? Defenders of Time is a multiplayer tower defense. Four on four, uh, co-op and competitive. Okay. Uh, you can play any number of players from one all the way up to eight, and our game remains balanced even if it's one on four. Okay, so tell me about the, the kind of tower defense gameplay. Exactly how does it work? Like, how do you, how do you, how do you start off? So, you, when you start off the game, uh, we have a bunch of test or uh, basic single player maps. A lot of people we've uh, found over our testing really don't like jumping into multiplayer. It, multiplayer. It's actually easier, but I'll get into that in a second. <laughs> That's, that's right. Uh, we get a bit of noise spill from our other stage. Don't worry about it. Uh, we'll just shout over Chris Waters. Shout him down. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, you start out in these single-player maps. So when you go and download the game, you can actually play single-player for, for free. Okay. Uh, and you, you go into these single-player maps, and you start out, and there's uh, you'll see a couple of lines streaming down, and that's where the enemies are tracking along. Find out that you can place towers along these paths and actually alter them. It's a full-blown, amazing tower defense. We uh, we played a lot of tower defenses and we didn't really like how you couldn't block the paths. Okay. So we made sure that we could do that in this game. Every single map is like that. Um, anyway, once you get into the game uh, in the single-player mode, you're free to then go and try the multiplayer mode. Multiplayer mode is where it's really at. Okay, so what so what was your kind of what was your inspirations for 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 Defenders of Time? Like, you know, what what kind of tired games, tired defense games you looked at before, and you're like, all right, I want to pick bits from that, and this is really type of the the feel we're going for. So what really started it was back in the day. I'm sure half the people here remember Warcraft Three. I'm sure. Tower I'm defense, sure everybody does. Zoator, yeah. Winter Mall, Argyle TD. That's even older. Uh, Cube Defense. I used to play those for hours with my friends. I used to try to get my friends together just to play that uh, in a LAN scenario because it was wonderful. Uh, when I came back to tower defense after being in the video game industry for a while, uh, we're mostly left with uh, tablet and mobile versions. And uh, I really wanted that experience that I had back in the day. There's some left on StarCraft, uh, but it's not as rich as it used to be. So we wanted to bring that back and really bring it up a whole uh, to a whole new level. Have you guys like released any like trailers or gameplay or anything to this point, or is it still is it too early to really show off yet? Are you just you're just initially talking about it? What's All of the stuff is getting posted online as we speak. We started PR really? operations about a week ago. Oh wow! So this is new, new. News it gets. <laughs> right, great. Yeah. So what's it like bringing this this thing? You've been how long have you been working on it actually? How long you We've been working on full production since August of last year. We okay. were doing pre-production since uh, November of the year before. It was it was quite a. Uh, so you've been you've been busy away behind the scenes, and what's what's it like now to be able to like finally talk about it at at E3? You know, like the biggest games event of the year. Like, how's it feel? What's wonderful about it is it's been something that we know that people would really enjoy so now that we're able to really properly tell people about it we've had people in for testing mm -hmm. but it's wonderful to see them light up as they play it's it makes my day fantastic and, and how's the reaction been you know the people who have have you had people do you have, do you have it here in a, in a capacity that people can come and see or even come and play or? we have full multi uh, two full multiplayer games going all the time and uh, eight single player stations running at our booth over in the South Hall. Okay. Uh, it's when people walk away, they come back, they bring their friends back. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> it, it's great. been really a, uh, it's been quite a response. Did you ever see that, um, I was just remembering it, the last kind of tower defense game I, I heard about, they, they were showing off uh, with Oculus support. Did you guys think, you know, did you ever see that? The idea was you could put Oculus Rift on and you could play this tower defense game and you could like lean down into the game and like, and see what was happening. Did you guys consider like jumping on with Oculus Tech and bringing that in? I'm so excited for Oculus Rift. Yeah. I can't tell you. <laughs> it's one of the coolest things to happen to video gaming in a long time. Okay. But anybody who's 
developed for consoles will tell you if the if the uh, peripheral isn't required, if it's not a game pad, yeah. uh, most people don't buy it. So we have a small team. We're a very tiny self-publishing indie studio. I've got 13 guys, and one of those is our uh, payroll department. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you guys are. So we haven't had time for it, but we'd we, love to. We can see the game running now. And uh, so tell, explain what's going on here. So this map we're calling Babylon right now, it's, okay. uh, it's loosely based on the Hanging Gardens. We got this ready just before E3 happened. So this is what we consider a simple entry map. There are uh, six entry points on this map, but uh, there's only one exit. And you can see uh, the person driving right now uh, is showing off actually our uh, drawing features, but I'll get to it in a second. Okay. But uh, he's routing all the guys around the towers twice, if possible. Uh, that's really, really important in our game. Uh, the towers aren't efficient enough on their own. That's the metric we use is efficiency. How okay. efficient is a tower when it's placed? Uh, the, the lower the level it is, the less efficient it is. And in the wrong scenario, it's inefficient. Like a single target in a multi-target scenario is not as efficient as it could be. But uh, right now, he's trying to build a maze to keep the game going so we can keep talking about it. <laughs> uh, you so guys, is this being played live now? I thought, or is this... It's being played live oh, right, right now. Okay. I see. I thought this was like uh, some pre-recorded, but no, this is, this is happening right now. Yeah, Fantastic. so cross your fingers. Let's hope he doesn't die. Uh, he's actually one of the best players we have, but he's uh, trying to get used to everything what, backstage. What's his name? Who's playing? Uh, his it's name? John Lamborn. Come on, John. All uh, right. We're all rooting for you, buddy. He does dev He does uh, map development, programming art. He is incredibly well, while, flexible. While John, <laughs> he just, I think he just wrote woo on the screen there. That was great. While John is trying not to die, um, if you guys are watching at home and would like to ask some questions or put some questions uh, to John here on stage, just uh, the best way to do that would be to tweet at me. My Twitter handle is at CamFrazRob. That's at C-A-M-F-R-A-Z-R-O-B. And I will throw them straight at John and he'll knock them away. Sounds great. But, uh, but, so what, what's, what's, his, what's his strategy? So what's, John, what's John's main strategy here, do you think? So his strategy is, um, hey, John, could you bring up the, uh, the flight paths real quick? All right. There you go. So right now you can see the flight paths. He's trying to get areas on the map where the flight paths are intercepting the ground paths, which are around the edges. Gotcha. Where, and he can uh, pass the ground around twice. Uh, later on, if he survives long enough, uh, actually, I see he's got some now. Uh, we've got some white towers that have an effect on them called gravity, uh, where air paths can be shifted. Uh, as far as we know, we're the first tower defense to ever try this. Uh, John, if you could, place some more white towers. So what do the white towers do? So the white towers, uh, their primary function is uh, a, as a force multiplier. They, uh, uh, they act to pull in uh, air paths, they reveal stealth units. Later ones can reveal uh, phasing units, which are phasing units. They uh, phase and deface at certain points in the game. Uh, but you can force them to deface using uh, certain white towers. So we also have a really cool feature in here for multiplayer uh, called that we're just term drawing, which allows you to draw on the map itself. We used to play a game called Company of Heroes. I, I'm sure a bunch of people are familiar with that. Yeah. Oh, so. defeats. John, what <laughs> happened, John? You were doing so well. We well, think it was probably our fault before we distracted him. Uh, Sorry, I, I, I do think we you. distracted him. <laughs> uh, the game is not easy 100% of the time. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, it was great to have a great to have a see of it there. I mean, it. But tell you tell me just a bit about um, the kind of drawing feature. So what what what's why is that in there? What's that all about? You said inspired, oh. yeah, inspired. So we used to play uh, Company of Heroes, yeah. uh, and what would happen is my friends and I would get together, and we'd all gather around and we'd go, okay, we always like to play defensively against the computer. Okay, well, we're gonna go up here. I'm gonna go here. You're gonna go down here. We need to go and cross in the center five minutes in, right before they capture that uh, third bridge, and blow it up. 
We need to do that. So we, we prep it in the beginning. We used to say, wouldn't it be really cool if we could show each other in the game? It, yeah, because des describing it through words is really difficult. You <laughs> have to yeah. be there. Yeah. It's really hard otherwise. So what we did was we took this and we said, okay, well, how would we, do, how would we accomplish the things that we want to do? First, we have to have integrated microphone support. And second, we need a way to draw and ping very easily. The drawing feature, the pinging, pinging's common in a lot of games, but drawing, if you hold down shift, you can actually draw out your maze before or during the game. The, uh, the drawing only lasts for a moment, but it's enough to show somebody it's ha what's happening. The other thing is, if you hold down control, you can draw on the UI itself. Oh, wow. So you can say, hey, look, I need you to give me money. And somebody goes, H how do I give you money? Well, oh, up in the upper left. No, 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 other left. <laughs> no, no, upper left. No, you're rather left. I know we've all had those moments. <laughs> yeah. All I need to do is hold down control and circle it. And it works. Uh, you can see it on the screen right now. Yep. Fantastic. So, um, Tell me more about some of the units and some of the things you can put down, you can kind of build to... So you've got the white so, tower, as you mentioned, but what else have you got? So you have two sides in our game. I, I'll start with the towers. Okay. Uh, you have white towers, which are a force multiplier. Mm -hmm. You have green towers, which are a radius uh, area of attack tower. Okay. They only work against ground, and uh, they're very effective. Uh, but they have to be clumped together. If you don't have at least three or four units, they... They're just not worth it. Uh, so right in the beginning, they're perfect. Then you have black towers, which do amazing single target damage, but they're really, really mediocre against, gr uh, against groups. Mm -hmm. You have lightning towers, which are uh, good against medium densities of units, like we're seeing right here. And there are red towers as well. Okay. Red towers do a ranged area of effect attack. But when you can't quite reach it or you need to hit air, they're not as effective as green, but, they're, uh, but they can hit air as well. Um, also, we, uh, the last tower we have is slowing, which is one of our very favorites. We've got different types of slowing. One does an outright freeze and uh, one does a line slow. And the other one, the base level one actually does this ranged slow that can attack air. So we find ourselves in the very end of the game actually using level one towers to uh, hit things. Cool. Well, actually, I've got a few questions that come through on Twitter, if you don't mind if I just throw them at you, John. Sounds so, great. Uh, so we have Kevin on Twitter says, how does Defensive Time compare with similar tower defense game Tower Madness? So is it similar to Tower Madness? I haven't played, I haven't tower, played tower, tower Madness, Madness okay. but I can no tell problem. you how we're a little different from yeah, some other ones. Yeah, go on, yeah. Uh, our tower defense games only tend to last 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. They're uh, really, really quick. So you'll find a lot of uh, smaller tower defenses do last two, three, five minutes, uh, but they tend to be a slower experience. Uh, one of the problems that uh, John's happen having right now is that this map is actually a multiplayer map that uh, we broke down for single. Okay. Uh, but it hasn't been uh, tweaked for uh, single player alone. So what's happening right now is he's getting the money that three players would get. So three players get money and then the, the commander, uh, which I can tell you all about in a minute, uh, doesn't get any money, but he controls how the other player, what the other team gets. He's getting all the money, and he's barely able to keep up. Uh, that's part of how we balance uh, players. If, if one person drops out, you're okay. Yeah, yeah. But if somebody gets together four boxes and drops them out on purpose to reduce communication lag, he's suddenly going to get hit with a ton of extra money that he's not going to be able to handle. Uh, I see. Okay, we've got another, a few more questions here. I'm just going to keep... Throwing them at you. So this one comes from Stuart Hopkins. This is a good question, actually. He says, can users create their own levels and share them? So are you It's something into that we've creation? talked about, and it's something that we would love to do. Yeah. It's something that really extends the life of a game. Absolutely. We have a couple of development issues with that. We, we, have, a, uh, we have effectively a 12-person development team. So one of the problems is, is our game is based on Unity, which should make it very easy. Yep. But in order to test out the levels, you need to use Unity Pro, which means that you'd have to buy Unity Pro before you could actually mock up the levels. But it's something we'd like to do in See. the future. So you'd either have to find a way of, you'd have to build your own tools, I guess, to enable people to build the levels without Unity Pro or something like that, which That's sounds exactly like a lot of work. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Our engineers can do it. It's yeah, just sure, a matter sure of time. Yeah, fantastic. 
All right, just got one more question, and that is just basically just about platforms. So, you know, people have liked the look of Defenders of Time. Where can they, where, where can they play it, and when in the future do you envisage this being finished? So we're releasing in August or September for $20. August, September, okay. Uh, and on that point, if you, uh, if you own the game and you have three other friends or one other friend that you want to play with you, they don't have to buy the game. Oh, really? Yeah. I can just say, hey, would you like to play with me? Oh, I don't own the game. Okay, well, that's okay. I do. And we'll play together. It's, uh, it's the old StarCraft spawning system, more or less. Fantastic. But you can play full online. Uh, and if you don't have single player, you can play too. So you'll be able to pick up the game at thedefendersoftime.com mm -hmm. or 4-lights.com. Uh, those are our two sites. And uh, it'll be av av available August, September. Uh, sometime in there, my engineers maybe promise not to give an exact date. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, 20 bucks. And yeah, and what, what systems are you going to be able to play it on, basically? Oh, right. It, we're releasing primarily on Mac and PC. Mac and PC, yeah. We would like to expand in the future, possibly to mobile, but uh, we promised that we would make a perfect game for one platform, and then we'd expand from there. So Excellent. cross your fingers, it may or may not appear on those other two. Well, John, it's been a pleasure having you on stage and talking about a brand new game. That's, I think it's the first time it's happened for me this E3, we're able to you know, talk about something that's just completely new, completely fresh, and just get be able to sit down with someone and able to show off someone they've been working on so hard for so long. It's a real pleasure. So thanks Thank so much for coming so on stage. Thank you so much for having me. We're excited no, to be here. It's been great, yeah. And we've had lots of questions on Twitter, so there's obviously quite a lot of excitement. So excellent job, well done. Fantastic, guys. Thank you so much for your questions. It makes it much easier for me. You know, eventually I run out of questions, but I've always got you guys to send some to me, so I appreciate that. But we're not quite done yet. I've got one more demo on this stage before Christopher Waters jumps over in one giant leap from the other side of the GameSpot booth all the way over here, and he's got a bunch more games. But my final game we'll be coming to in just a minute is going to be Payday 2, Big Bank Heist, so make sure you come back for that. We will, of course, return in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere.